think I heard these two pieces for the first time when I was around 10, and it was a recording by Yevgeny Kissin of the two works that he made when he was only 12, and I, I think my mother gave it to me because she thought I would you know, identify strongly with that, with a, a somewhat of the same age playing this amazing music. I'd already had a great love for Chopin. He was my first love at the piano, and so it was natural that I would eventually come to these pieces. They're glorious works filled with such inventiveness, and they have so much of Chopin and you know what he was to become in them. Something that's interesting about these two pieces is that though Marxist II was written first, they're both glorious works. They have gorgeous slow movements. They're filled with inventive melodic material and development of that. You get the sense that uh, he was trying to build on what he'd done in the second in the first. His orchestration's a little more adventurous. You also get the sense that perhaps as his technique as a pianist developed or as he discovered new textures and new ways to write for the piano, he expands what he does with that as well. And the last movement of the first is very technically challenging. And even, even though I've been playing it since I was 14, it's, so there's challenges in that which you always have to come to afresh. But he wrote so well for the piano and I mean, of course, he devoted his life to it, essentially. He just understood the instrument perfectly. quite hard to generalise the first movements of these pieces once the piano enters, the emotional landscape is so kind of turbulent and quicksilver. It's just continually changing, it makes the, the landscape of, of these first movements so exciting and unpredictable. Yeah, there's a lovely quote by Chopin about the second movement of the first concerto, which I, I'll read because, I mean, it, his words are better than mine. It's not meant to create a powerful effect. It is rather a romance, calm and melancholy, giving the impression of someone looking gently towards a spot that calls to mind a thousand happy memories. It is a kind of reverie in the moonlight on a beautiful spring evening. The last movement of both of these concertos are, are, are Polish dances, and they have very different feels. Both of the last movements of each concerto are virtuosic, essentially, but the, the kind of virtuosity is different. Um, in the second concerto, it's this kind of suave, elegant um, virtuosity. Both are filled with a lot of humour, but in the first concerto, it starts with the orchestra with a very dramatic statement, and when the piano enters, it's, it's much more brilliant, and that brilliance is something that um, is there throughout the, the whole of the last movement of the first concerto. That's what is so touching about Chopin's music, is that intimacy, it's that personal kind of candlelit quality that his music has. You know, some of the most profound things that Chopin's music has said in a whisper. It's music that it glows in, in a very intimate and personal way. <laughs>